good morning. We have time for a favorite. I hate to stop the chatter. Keep chatting. We'll sing amongst the chatter. It's fine. How about 2056? 2056 is God is so good. So you chat and sing, whatever works. Have time for one more quick favorite if anybody has one. Anybody? Hi. 2151. Thank you, Anita. 2151. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. Well, it's a blessing to have you here. And uh, just want to welcome you for the opportunity to worship and praise the Lord. And I just pray that each one would feel God's presence and God's love today. 
Because we've been made in God's image and we've been made by God for God. And I just pray that you just feel God's love and grace that God has for each and every one of us. So at this time, I'm going to pray and then we'll have announcements. So I'm going to ask you not only open up your hands as we bow our heads, but I'm going to ask you to open up your hearts and your minds to the Lord. Let us go to God. Good morning, Lord. We thank you and praise you for this day that you have made. Dear Lord, for the opportunity to worship you and praise you because you are so worthy. Well, gracious God, I'm not going to speak for anyone else, but I can speak for myself. I know it, I believe it, but I don't always live it. There's many times, instead of my focus on you, dear Lord, I'm holding on to hurt or brokenness or uncertainty or, or doubt or busyness of this world. But dear Lord, we weren't made to carry it. 700 times your word, you tell us to come to you. So I pray today that we would allow you to work in our lives. We, I pray the Holy Spirit loosen the grip of the things I'm so tightly holding, that I would truly surrender it and lay it at the foot of the cross. Give it to the one that can do all things. Give it to the one that is not limited. Now we have empty open hands to receive the blessings that you have for each one of us. We have empty open hands to receive your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. So gracious God, I thank you that you have chosen to use us to make a difference in the world. The people can receive that love and grace and mercy that we receive from you and that we would give to others. I just pray, dear Lord, if there's anyone that needs a special touch today, that they'd feel your presence. Know they are loved. Know that they're forgiven. That they'd hear their name. So, dear Lord, just minister to each heart. Know that you never leave nor forsake. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. And all of God's people say, Amen. Now it's time for announcements. Are there any announcements today? And just raise up your hand and the ushers will bring a, a mic to you. Any announcements? Are there any announcements? All right. Uh, Deb and I are still working on the soup supper. We've got just a little under a, a month now. Uh, right about a month, till the soup supper's here. Um, so we're happy to announce that the board is empty. Everybody is committed to making or bringing or doing something. Um, next week, we'll be passing around um, spots where we are still needing people to help, clean dishes, bus tables, refill things on tables, all that good fun stuff. So look for that next week, and if you want to volunteer, just hit Deborah up. Thank you. Is anyone else? Uh, this Wednesday, the youth group is going to be joining other youth groups in town for Fields of Faith at the football field at 7. Um, you guys are all welcome to come check out the event. Uh, it's at 7 o'clock. Everyone's welcome. And all the youth are invited also from um, Ellsworth and other surrounding areas. So Fields of Faith, 7 o'clock this Wednesday. Fields of Faith, 7 o'clock this Wednesday at the football field. And all invited. Okay, thank you. Also today, uh, Good Sam, uh, we have the service at 2 o'clock. And Charlie, I'm ready for you to play because you don't want me to sing by myself. It's not a good thing. That happened once in protection, and there was a man that was 99 years old. He said, surely to God someone can play the piano, and one of the nurses did. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that was at Lee Edmiston, but anyway, uh, all right. Okay. Are there any others? Do we have? Okay, we got one right there. Keep prayers for Mo's cat. Um, he came home one day and he was bleeding. Um, he has stitches now. Um, he got um, so keep prayers for him. He's he's doing better, but he came home one day. Okay, we'll be praying. All right, thank you. Are there any others? Well, if not, I'll see if I get it right this week. 
Now's the time to greet one another. So let's take a little time. And since it's been raining, tell one person God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. The Lord be with you. Now we'll have our call to worship. Live by the Spirit and not by the desires of the flesh. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. We'll have our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we want to be committed to Christ. We ask you to lead us in the six steps to a generous life, that we would grow in prayer, Bible reading, worship, witness, financial giving, and service. We pray this in our precious Lord and Savior's name. And now we will sing Love Divine, All Love Excelling, hymn number 384, and it's also on the screen.
You may be seated, and at this time, we'll have children's time with the young disciples. Please come and join me, please. Hi. So how's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good? Awesome. Okay. Would you like that, sir? You want one? All right. Okay. These are commitment cards. Can you guys tell me what commitment is? <coughs> One at a time. Yes. What do you got? Something you put effort in. Something you put effort in. Something. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Something you're passionate with it. All right. All right. All right. So I'm giving the youth and... Then I'll give out some for the children. Here's youth. Okay. All right. There's a child. Okay. Does everyone have one? Yep. No. Oh, there you go. The one that gave me my first answer, right? And did a good job. All right. So these are commitment cards, and I have them for fifth grade and down, and then over fifth grade, okay? And then those are the youth. And uh, so sixth grade on, uh, get commitment cards. Uh, for the youth. And uh, we're starting a commitment of uh, actually being committed to Christ. This would be the introductory. We actually have um, one for a family. Uh, we have uh, devotions out there in the front of the foyer if anyone would like to have one. And uh, to go through this six weeks. And many times what we have, we have like a, a pledge campaign. You know what a pledge is? Good. And uh, you can tell Betty, I'm always trying to explain it to her. But she's a farmer. She says, I don't pledge. I give what God gives me. So anyway, so uh, I'm on the couch. Yeah, okay. But, But anyway, so anyway, a lot of people talk about that. But I want us to look at it a whole, since we've been made whole, and I want us to look at the whole thing. So we'll be looking at... Instead of just financially, we're going to be looking at reading the Bible, about praying, about worship, about witnessing, about financial giving, and also about service. So it's going to be the whole thing, not just one thing that we'll be talking about. And so I'm kind of excited about it. And here's things for children that you guys can look at. It says, for children, are you ready to love Jesus? Would you mark that one? Okay. Are you ready to pray? Okay. Are you ready to read the Bible? All right. Are you ready to go to church? All right. Are you willing to witness for God? Okay. And are you ready to give? I will put money in the offering plate, and then it even, that's for the children. And it says, are you ready to work for God? Okay. Now, here's one for the youth. You think they'll get it? You do. All right, Drew. All right. Are you ready to follow Jesus Christ? Yep. Yep. All right. There's a couple of no's and then there's some yeses. Are you ready to pray? Okay. Are you ready to read the Bible? It says, no, I'm not ready to make a commitment. And then the yes, it says, I will read the Bible daily, setting aside regular time. Are you ready to go to church? And there's a couple, one no's and three yeses. Are you willing to witness for God? And it says, I will tell others about Jesus Christ. And I will invite my friends to attend worship and youth activities. Are you ready to give? One says, no, I'm not ready to, ready to commit at this time. And there's two other yeses. It says, yes, I'm ready and I will give this much every week. And this other one says, yes, I will give up two soft drinks a week and donate that money to church. I'm glad they didn't say anything about coffee. All right. Are you willing to work for God? Yes, I will help to set up for youth activities. Yes, I will stay up, stay to put things away. Yes, I will help organize youth trips and events. And yes, I will help with youth service and projects. And both of them have a place to put your names and date it, all right? But I just want you to look at that for this next six weeks, okay? And if you lose it, I'll have another one for you, okay? But anyway... Do you guys want to pray? You ready? Okay. So you're going to follow me, okay? Okay. You ready, Drew? 
All right, let's get ready. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for loving us. Thank you for the, your commitment, Jesus. Thank you for your commitment, Jesus. And by your grace. And by your grace. And by your spirit. And by your spirit. That we will be committed to you. That we will be committed to you. And show your love. And show your love. To everyone. To everyone. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. Drew, you want to help them with the candy? All right. All right. What do you think? All right. All right. Yeah, she's going to hold it, and then she'll take hers. All right. Yeah, you might want to take yours now. You never know what they're going to get. All right. Now's the opportunity as we uh, receive uh, our offering, and also this is World Communion Sunday. I think you probably also received a, a little envelope. No, nope. time. Oh wow, where did I go with that? Oh, I skipped way down. I, okay, so we're going to pass the plate twice today. But first, we're going to share <laughs> joys and concerns. And the biggest concern is is when will that pastor be able to read? from one line to the next. All right. Any joys or concerns? Yes. All right. We got one up here. Okay. Just wanted to announce it's been a great season for our tennis girls. They won regionals as a team over the weekend. We've got two doubles teams going to state. And uh, just want to give a, a thank you to Coach Masog, for sure. Uh, he does a great job. He's sneaking away back in the corner. Get the camera <laughs> on him. He does a great job with the girls, and they all appreciate him, uh, and, and the head coach as well. She's awesome for the girls. Um, keep, uh, keep the girls in, in your prayers for safe travels next week as they go to state and, uh, and the journey that they've got. Thanks. Okay. Okay, I think Roger. All right. I have a concern. I hate to bring it to a church, but I'm going to have an operation uh, Wednesday, and it's got to do with my eyes. I don't have cataracts, but I got some other eye issues, and I appreciate your prayers. Um, it's about a 45 minute surgery, and takes about 10 days, two weeks to recover, so I'll be putting uh, frozen peas on my eyes for a few <laughs> few days. Okay. So right. say a prayer for me if you okay. would, please. Rod, you'll be in our thoughts and prayers, and yes, we'll be praying each and every day. All right. I, I just wanted to say thanks for coming to the football game the other night. That okay. meant a lot to me. You were standing there cheering on the fellas, and yeah. I thought that was really cool. You sat with Ted and I. That was and volleyball. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. All right. You bet. You bet. Last week, I asked for prayers for Ken. This week, he's here and doing very well, and we're so thankful. He's having a birthday this week. One never knows with the blockage they had, and we might not have had a birthday. <laughs> so we are very, very thankful that um, those little nudges that you hear that maybe I ought to have this checked out, you need to listen to them. They're very, very true. So thank you. Are there any others? Okay. All right. Here we go. Those of you that couldn't hear Evelyn very well, that was Deb's cat, Mo. He got his foot tangled and he's been hurting pretty bad so he's having a little trouble walking and moving around Deb's kind of worried about him but he's doing better today yesterday was a rough day 
Okay. Um, so, yeah, keep Deb and Mo in your prayers because yeah. she needs it. <laughs> okay. Um, but the other thing I just wanted to say is um, Thursday was my final in one of my classes, and that was fundamentals, and you have to pass that class to go on to Med Surge 1. And, um, you know, nursing school is really hard. <laughs> And if it wasn't for all of you here um, encouraging and praying and, and helping and um, for my husband for stepping up and being mom and dad all at the same time, 90% of the time. So I really appreciate all of your prayers and, and um, encouragement. So it, it's helped a lot. And I've moved on to Med Surge 1. So. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, today's upper room talks about joys and celebrations, that God is a God of joy and celebration, not all wrath and smiting. And, and so I hear celebrations here in this room. Uh, indeed, we have so much to celebrate and so much to be thankful for. Rose is big on talking to us about the daily blessings we get together, we should celebrate and be joyful. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So true. Are there any others? Okay. Well, if not, let us uh, go to the pastoral prayer and then the Lord's Prayer. So let us go to God. Let's take a little time for a moment of silence. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the blessings, the blessings of being able to come before you by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we can come to that throne room of grace and feel your presence and know that we can take all prayers to you. You tell us to. Yes, we pray for, for Mo and, and for Deb. Dear Lord, we pray for all our students, whether in preschool, through college, or graduate work, dear Lord. We ask that you just continue to bless them and direct them and guide them and, and also their teachers. And this, dear Lord, we thank you for each and every one. Just minister to each and every heart. For those that are Going to have surgery, like Rod, dear Lord, minister to him. For those that have just got out of the hospital, like Vicki Wacker, dear Lord, continually to minister to her. For Ken, dear Lord, we thank you and praise you how well the procedure went. Dear Lord, for those that are be going to doctors, or dear Lord, uh, we lift them up, each and every one that they'd feel your presence and love, that we're never alone. You never leave nor forsake. Gracious God, I lift up those that are grieving loved ones. Dear Lord, minister to them. For the caregivers, dear Lord, we also lift them up and we thank you and praise you for them, for how they show love and grace and and kindness, and, and patience, and gentleness, and dear Lord, what a blessing that is. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you as we reflect later on about worldwide communion, how people all over the world are taking time and reflecting on your love, on your forgiveness, because dear Lord, you did it for all the world. Minister to each and every one. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the activities. Dear Lord, for this coming Wednesday for the Fields of Faith. And there will be children throughout our community, dear Lord, from all denominations, dear Lord, celebrating and sharing and talking and singing about their faith and about a God that is so big that desires a relationship with each and every one. I, I thank you and praise you for that. 
Dear Lord, I thank you for all our activities, for our sports. Most of all, I thank you for our children. Just continually to bless them and our coaches, dear Lord. Minister to them. Dear Lord, we thank you again for loving us, for forgiving us, and for the Holy Spirit continually working in us and through us. And I thank you for that. Now, gracious God, we come before you as we say the Lord's Prayer. I pray today that by your Spirit we live out each word as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a stay or daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we give us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Rise the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, at this time, we'll have her praise him. Let us be bread two times. And we'll see that in the faith we sing, number 2260, or on the screen. Let us go to the Lord. this time, even though I try to get to it earlier, is the time for offering. Would the ushers please come forward? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you for this time, for this day that you have made, for the opportunity to be in service with you. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless this offering, that it further your kingdom. Here in Ellsworth and throughout the world, the people would hear the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. That we serve a Lord a risen Lord that defeated not only sin, but death. Gracious God, we just thank you and praise you as you bless this offering and bless the offering for world communion. We thank you again for the opportunity to be in ministry with you. We just thank you as you bless those that are able to give not only financially, but of time and service and prayer. Dear Lord, minister to each and every one. And just allow them to feel your presence and know that they are loved. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen.
Our scripture this morning is taken from Acts 26, verses 27 to 31. In the Pew Bible, it's page 180. <clears throat> King Agrippa, did you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Agrippa said to Paul, are you so quickly persuading me to become a Christian? Paul replied, whether quickly or not, I pray to God that not only you, but also all who are listening to me today might become such as I am, except for these chains. Then the king got up, and with him the governor and Bernice, and those who had been seated with them. And as they were leaving, they said to one another, This man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. And then from Galatians 5, to 24. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no other law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Would you please uh, bow your heads with me? Gracious God, I humbly come before you today. And I just ask that you would give me the words, that they'd be your words, not mine. Because gracious God, your return, words never return void. Penetrate our hearts on about being committed to you. What it is to be an altogether Christian instead of an almost Christian. What it means to be focused on you and on others. So I just pray for interpretation, application of your word for our lives. And what a blessing it is to be in your very presence. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. About 65 miles south of where my parents live, in a town called Joplin, Missouri. There's a church. It's a Joplin United Methodist Church. It's a fairly new congregation. They've only been in that church for about 20 years in that building. But if you would go there, you would notice just outside the church is a doghouse. It even has a nice little cross on it. and It has fresh straw with a nice towel. And a dog would come out and greet you. You know, and it's nothing special about that dog. It would be a, it's a mixed breed, and actually, it only has three legs. But that dog would come and greet you. And what a wonderful testimony. What a wonderful witness. Because that dog is coming to you, saying, I don't care if you're wounded. I don't care if you're broken. I don't care if you're hurting. Maybe you feel wounded and broken. Maybe you feel like no more than a three-legged dog. You are welcome in this house of the Lord. Actually, they even have another dog house just for guests if they want to come by and stay for a while. You know, and when I think about it, I want us to look at an invitation. It's not just for individual, not just solo, but for all of us to go on a journey for this next six weeks. It's a journey with many steps that start out with prayer and Bible reading and worship and witness and financial giving and service. It's for all of us. Maybe for those that are feeling strong and standing 
straight and upright. Or for us that maybe feel wounded, maybe feel broken. You know, one thing I've noticed, there's times that we are stretcher bearers, but there are times that we're actually on the stretcher. And this journey is for all of us. For us to grow in our commitment. For us to grow in our love for God and for others. When I look at this, I know it will minister to each one of us. Today, we had the reading of Apostle Paul talking to King Agrippa and Festus. And when we look at that, about almost persuaded. Apostle Paul, if when we read Acts 25 and 26, he has been arrested. Nothing that he has done wrong, but he was going to Jerusalem and they had him arrested. And if one is arrested, you'd think they'd probably be spending time, uh, poor me, or I shouldn't have been arrested. But no, Apostle Paul is using this to further the kingdom of God. He is witnessing and telling others about God's love, about God's forgiveness. When he is talking to King Agrippa, see King Agrippa it was one of Herod's sons. He was Jewish. He would have known of the prophets. and That's why it first talk starts about, you know the prophets. You know what they have said in the Hebrew writings and the Old Testament about the Messiah and who this Messiah is. Apostle Paul first talks about, you know, I was a Pharisee. I was one that followed the law and I wanted to persecute those that followed Jesus as they called it back then, the way. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he was saying, I even had papers. I even had papers to serve people. Anyone that was following Jesus. I could have them thrown in prison. I, I could have them killed. I was on my way to Damascus. And I heard my voice. I seen a bright light and heard my voice. It said, Saul, Saul, why are you per persecuting me? And I fell off my horse and I couldn't even see, but I said, who is this? Lord, who are you? He said, it's Jesus, the one you have been persecuting. And of course, he was blind for three days and he told Agrippa about being blind. They took him to Damascus and I always enjoyed the location where they took him to Damascus. Does anyone know where that was? I like this. It was on Straight Street. We all need to get straight, right? And for three days, he could not see. He couldn't see outward, but inwardly, he was looking at his life and how much he needed the Savior. How much he needed Jesus. And he was telling Agrippa, how God was using him to talk not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles, and letting them know about the freedom that they have in Jesus Christ. And Agrippa said, are you trying to quickly persuade me? And Apostle Paul said, it doesn't matter if it's quickly or not. But he is telling him how much he needed Jesus. Because we all need a Savior. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. But when I talk about this, some of us could be like Agrippa. Well, I went to church because that's what I'm supposed to do. I went to church because that's what my family did. 
I was baptized because that's what was expected of me. That's why I joined the church, because that's what was expected of me. But for some, for many, they would tell you, I'm here because of God's love, because of God's forgiveness. And it has transformed me, and it has made a difference in all of my life. You can see on the screen there's a man named John Wesley. He was a preacher's kid. Actually, both of his grandparents were preachers. And he even would recall. He said, you know, I did all the things. I went to school. I become a pastor. I, I did all the means of grace. And one of those that we'll be doing today is taking communion on this world day of communion. He said, I tried to do no evil. I tried to do all the good that I could. But he said, I was just one of those almost Christians. Almost Christians. And he said, the difference between almost, and all the together Christian is how the Holy Spirit is working in your heart. How you have such a love for God and for others. And the Holy Scriptures, you know, are true. The doctrine of the church, you know, is true. And it makes a difference in your life going from almost to all together Christian. As we talk about being committed to Christ. That we'd be an altogether Christian. That everything that we do influences. Everything that we do, that we do for the Lord and for others. I want to tell you about a story about a man named Lawrence. He was from Nigeria. And the reason I'm telling you that the author of this committed to Christian, Bob Crossman, you see he's a United Methodist pastor. But 1962, he was at Perkins Seminary, United Methodist Seminary, SMU Seminary. And he was working to, because he was poor, he said, working to get all the money he could. He was cleaning toilets. He was being a custodian, doing all that he could. And he knew this young man. His name was Lawrence. He said, I knew he's from Nigeria. I knew he was poor. But what he taught me, that he was so committed to Jesus Christ, he would talk about how much more valuable that was than any silver, any gold, and worth more than any earthly kingdom. Because he found out that Lawrence was once the first son of the king in Nigeria. He was going to be the heir of the throne of the empire. He had all, all the property could be his. All those castles, all the kingdom, all the palaces, and 12 million subjects could be his. He was raised a Muslim. He even talked about, he even saw where Christians were stoned. He witnessed that. But there was a missionary, a Methodist missionary, you notice I didn't say United Methodist because this was in 1962 and we didn't become United Methodist just 50 years ago in 1968. Shared with him about Jesus Christ. About God's love. About God's forgiveness. And he said, on that day, he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he said, it was so transforming. He says, like, wonderful cold water was poured on me. I felt so cleansed. I felt so alive. He felt so alive, but for two months, he hadn't said anything. He came home one Sunday afternoon from that Methodist church. 
and his father was sitting on the throne, the king. And the father said, how was church today, son? And he was shocked. His folks had found out. His mother started crying and screaming. And she said, son, you've got to turn away from that. Because not only you could lose your life, but I could lose my life also. You've got to turn away. And he says, I can never turn away from my Lord and Savior. I don't care if I have nothing. Any earthly riches, I can't turn away. And actually, that week, one of the missionaries was able to sneak him out of the country. And then he went to the seminary. At Perkins Theological Seminary in Dallas, Texas. And he would tell you about how much greater and how much more wealth he had than if he ever would have stayed or became the king. Also, when I think about commitment, there were a reading from Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. And the Bible has a lot to say about fruit. It's mentioned 106 times in the Old Testament, 70 times in the New Testament. A behavior that produces good fruit by God's power, not by our own. When we are committed, fully committed, the Holy Spirit works in us in such mighty ways. The first is love. It's clearly dominant. It's that agape love, that unconditional love. You know, we're in a world that everything is conditioned. If you do this, I'll do that. But God's love and the love that we are to have is a sacrificial love. It isn't based on what we receive, but it's based off because we have been loved unconditionally that we are to love unconditionally. That joy. It's deep down sense of well-being that abides in the heart of the person who knows all is well between himself and the Lord. No matter what circumstances they're going through, that they have joy. It's not based on any favorable circumstances, on any human emotion. It is divinely stimulated by God. There's love, there's joy, and peace. That peace refers to tranquility of mind that comes from the saving relationship of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That peace that goes on way beyond our understanding. The peace that Ken had when he was going to receive those stents. Knowing that God is for him. Knowing that God will never leave nor forsake. It's that peace that you have. And patience has to do with tolerance and long suffering that endures injuries or afflictions by others. The calm willingness to accept situations that may be irritating or even painful that you have patience to withstand. Patience withstand. I'm really helping Betty with that. Now kindness. I'm in trouble, but I, I, I'm used to it. But kindness relates to a tender concern for others. A tender concern for all others. Goodness. It has to do with moral and spiritual excellence that is known by its sweetness and active kindness. To all. Goodness. Has to do with moral and spiritual excellence. That is known by its sweetness. I guess I did that. Good thing you guys have already heard about patience. Now I'll go to faithfulness. Faithfulness is the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. That pertains to loyalty and trustworthiness. We see that in Lamentations 3.22. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases 
for His compassion, it never fails. They are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness. Gentleness. It could be better translated to meekness. It's being submissive to the will of God. Meekness is not weakness, but it is being led by the Master. When a stallion was broken in Jesus' day, it wasn't weak, but it could be led by the Master. And then the last is self-control. And this has reference to restraining passion and appetites. That self-control that comes from the Spirit of God, the fruit of the Spirit. So when I look at being all in, when I look at being committed to Christ, it isn't just a seven-week program, but it's a journey all of our life. All of our life. To being committed to the one that loves us. The one that has forgiven us. The one that gives us the power to endure all things. And to continually to love God with all our power, all our strength, all our will. And to love our neighbor as thyself. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you. And I do pray, dear Lord, that we would be all in. That we'd be all together. Not all most Christian, but all together Christian. That you would be continually to working in us and through us. And I thank you and praise you for that. Minister to each and every one of our hearts. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Now at this time, I'm going to have my communion stewards come and, and help me out. Communion. And the communion bread that we'll be receiving today was made by our fourth graders. As it is worldwide communion, we had all our fourth graders make this communion bread. On that night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, broke it, and said, this is my body, take, eat, and do this remembrance of me. And then after the meal, he took the cup of wine, the third cup, and that would be the cup of redemption because they celebrated four promises. And Jesus blessed it and said, this is a new covenant. My blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Take, drink, and do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you. And we just ask, dear Lord, that you would minister to each one of our hearts. And as we receive this means of grace, that you would just draw us closer to you. As we reflect on your love and your forgiveness, the price that you have paid for our sins. And knowing that we have been forgiven. Knowing that we are restored. Knowing that we are a new creation. Dear Lord, minister to each one of our hearts. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given. Christ. Okay. Oh, you want the cup? Okay. 
Does anyone else want to come? All right. We'll have you come forward. And you can receive the bread. Just put your hand like a form of a cross. I will put the bread in your hand. You can either dip it in the cup. Or you can also receive individual cup. Would you please, with the, would you please come?
continually to minister to each one of our hearts as we reflect on this communion time and communion throughout the world. As people are drawing closer to your love and grace, these things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Now at this time, if you're comfortable standing, let us stand and let us sing, Lord, I want to be a Christian, number 402. God, we thank you and praise you, how you have put it in our hearts to be more like you, how you're working in us through your spirit. We just thank you and praise you, and dear Lord, that we would continually to reach out and continually to love, and I send them out in your power, power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you all.